the Paracave Podcast, proudly brought to you by major sponsor Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Paramount Leash Club, Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, BTZD Clothing, and the official media partner of the Paracave Podcast, the Parramatta Times. G'day, it's Gus Warland here from Gotcha for Life and Triple M. I'd love to invite you along to the Mental Fitness Gym. Go to the mentalfitnessgym.org. That is a place where you can pick up some exercises to build your mental fitness, to work on that emotional muscle, those muscles in your head that are so powerful. Please come and join us at the mentalfitnessgym.org for all that stuff to build your emotional muscle and your mental fitness. Welcome to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. And now over to your host, Troy Warner, broadcasting live from the world famous Paracave. And yes, hello and welcome back to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. Troy Warner here, and it is round two of, or week two, I should say, of the Pacific Championships. And look, I guess we saw some great action last week in the Pacific Championships uh, with some great teams being played against each other. And this week we see... The both the men's and women's sides from the Cook Islands take part this week as Samoa and Tonga are taking a rest in the men's and the women's uh, competitions. Uh, so great to see uh, that happening. And look, it all kicks off on Saturday at 7.10 p.m. A Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time, and it is the Fijians taking on the Cook Islands, and this looks like a really good game. Look, the Cook Islands, they have a f- sprinkling of NRL experience in their side, most notably Isan Masters and Brad Takarangi. He is a former podcast guest, of course. Uh, Tebai Marara as well, Zane Tedavano. Uh, so a sprinkling of NRL experience in their side, more NRL experience in the Fijian side, obviously Taruva, Sivo, Jennings, Wonga Blake, who now plays in the English Super League, Valame, uh, Kemen Guama, who's played in the NRL before, Tui Kamakamita, uh, Viliami Kikau, just to name a few there. So a lot more experience there um, in this Fijian side. Um, Captain of the Cook Island side, actually, I should say congratulations to Brad Takanangi being the captain as well. So uh, that is a great honour uh, for Brad and former guest on the podcast. Uh, so, look, this game is an important one for Fiji. Uh, they had that loss last week against the PNG side. So, very crucial that they get the win this time. The, it was a very close game the last time they played. Uh, last year, uh, around the same time, the 22nd of October, 2023, and it was 22-18 to the Fijian side on that occasion. So um, they've only played the one time, and it was a win to the Fijian side. So as I said, the Fijians, they will be up for a big win, uh, having not... Lo- oh, having lost against the PNG side, and especially being in Fiji as well, um, you would want to get the win there uh, as well. Cook Islands, look, they will give it a real good dig. Um, and we see from these island nations, they certainly do. They are so proud to represent their nations uh, in rugby league on the world stage. And this is their first game in this tournament. So they'll be pumped up for this first game. So this will be a really interesting one. Look, 
I am going to tip the Fijians in this one. I think they will have the bounce back factor from last week and they will be better off having that run last week. Um, but look, I'd be, I wouldn't complain if the Cook Islands got the win there. So look, um, that will be a good one. And then on Saturday as well, before that game, there is the women's game, and that is the at 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time from HFC Bank Stadium in Suva, now Fiji. The game is on Foxtel, KO, and Channel 9 now and 9 Gem. Um, and look, they, the Fijians, this uh, is their first hit out from in the women's game um, this time around. Uh, last week, we obviously saw Australia and PNG, the Gillaroos up against the PNG Orchids, and we also saw Samoa take on Tonga. So both of these sides is the first time that they've played in this championships here. Uh, and look, I, I to, look, to be honest, I don't know much about the Fijian side. Uh, none of the names become familiar there. Um, uh, Cassie Staples and Talia Holmes uh, for obviously played in the Sharks side. So there's a bit of uh, names there. Cassie Staples is the fullback for Fiji. Um but obviously not a lot of the other ones that I know there. Uh, and same for the Cook Islands women's team. But uh, f- current, f- I guess you could say current guest or former guest on the podcast for an interview. And also she helped me out for the NRLW a few times this season, Kayana Takarangi will co-captain the side and she'll play in the fullback position. So the Cook Islands women's team, they're looking for a World Cup berth. Um, So this is one step closer to that if they can get the win here and perform well in this Pacific Championship. So, look, uh, a little bit of a... A sour point, I think, last week, uh, Tonga losing the game and now not being able to qualify for the next World Cup. Look, I, I think that's ridiculous, to be honest. I honestly, honestly think that um, we should be probably trying to get as many nations into the World Cup as possible. Look, I, I'm no expert on the round ball game, but I think there might be 32 uh, qualifiers for the World Cup finals. Look, we're obviously not as big in the world uh, as the round ball game um, in the world, uh, but I'm sure we could fill many more spots than what is available. And look, I would just like to see all of these nations play in the a World Cup. I mean, it just means so much to these, especially these island nations. Um, who don't get to play that many games. Um, The players don't get to represent their heritages too much. Uh, It generally is in like an end-of-season game like this, like these Pacific Championships. And I I just think it's ridiculous that we can't have like all the nations that will... When I say all the nations, I mean we do have nations like Russia and... um, There are minnow, and I'm talking minnow nations that play rugby league. So obviously you couldn't have all of those. But I'm thinking, especially like Cook Islands, PNG, Tonga, Samoa, New Zealand, Australia, um, just all of these sides qualify for the World Cup. Um, I think it would be a great thing um, to coincide, I guess, with the the Men's World Cup. I mean, you could have... Double headers all the time. Um, that's my reasoning anyway. But uh, the Cook Islands, they're trying to get into this World Cup. So, look, congratulations to Kiana. I will send my uh, uh, send my congratulations to her. Um, and it's just a great honour, obviously, to co-captain your country. Look, I'm going, I'm going to go for an upset here. I'm going to go with... Uh, 
Kiana's side and go for the Cook Islands in this side. I think in this game, I think that'll be a, a really big upset, I think. I think the Fijians may just go into that game as favourites, but uh, I'm going to go for the Cook Islands in that one. There we go. How's that one? Uh, so on the Sunday, we have... Uh, this, this is the big clashes on the Sunday. So it's going to be, a, instead of Super Saturday, it's going to be a Super Sunday. Now, it all kicks off at 1.35pm, and it is in New Zealand, this one. Um, this is the 1.35pm, and it is the Kiwi Ferns taking on the Jillaroos of Australia. Now, look, this is going to be a great clash, this one, um, for sure. Now, it's at a sold-out stadium in Christchurch, so there's going to be a big crowd there, which is great to see. Um, obviously, the New Zealanders, they have sold out every home game for the New Zealand Warriors this season in the men's game in the NRL. So it's great to see them continuing that one on and selling out the stadium. So great uh, Apollo Stadium it is in Christchurch. So well done to the New Zealand Rugby League fans. So for the Kiwi Ferns, Gail Broughton plays for the Broncos uh, makes her debut for the Kiwi Ferns against Australia. Um, and also Tyler King will be named at half, or she's been named at halfback with last year's captain, Racine McGregor, not featuring this year. I think she is getting married around this time, so that's why she isn't playing this year. Uh, Amber Hall playing for the Roosters this season in the NRLW. She's been named in the second row. Um, and look, don't be surprised if there is those short uh, jives at the line. I think um, it takes a lot to get Amber down. Uh, and she has scored some tries for the Roosters this year like that, close to the line. So. That'll be a great one to look. Uh, that'll be one for the Jillaroos to look out for. Um, Anissa Biddle from the Cronulla Sharks. We saw her in the centre position for them this year. She's actually in the second row. I think last season for the Kiwi Ferns, she played in the second row as well. A uh, very powerful ball runner. Um, and look, she won't look out of place in the second row, that is for sure. Um, so one of the best for the Cronulla Sharks this year. So uh, itching, I'm sure she will be to get out there and give it a real hard crack, that's for sure. Um, look, this... New Zealand side, it's a good-looking side. Um, I think they're obviously Gail Broughton from the Broncos there. She was one of the players of the year. Um, certainly had the first couple of games out this year for the Broncos, but then came back and got them on their winning ways. And I think uh, she'll be crucial in the 5-8th position for the Kiwi Ferns. For the Jillaroos... Uh, who had that massive win against the PNG Orchids last week. Um, just the one, uh, two changes to their side. Skipper Ali Brigginshaw returns. Uh, she was rested last week as a precaution after finger surgery. Uh, we saw last week Tiana Penatani moving from the centres to 5'8". She goes back to the centres and dressed Jess Sergis goes back to the reserves bench. Quincy Dodd, uh, the hooker for Australia, suffered a minor quad injury in last week's victory over PNG. Um, and Olivia Higgins, who made her debut last week uh, off the bench, she will now start in the number nine position. So uh, Jessica Elliston uh, from the Gold Coast Titans is a new face on the bench. Keely Davis, also from the Roosters, is coming to the squad as injury cover for Dodd and Lauren Brown with that hamstring injury. So, look, still a very strong side, this Australian team. Um, obviously, a lot of strike out, out wide. Julia Robinson, six tries last week. 
and Chikaya Whitfield, five tries last week. Look, you're not going to see that this week against the Kiwi Ferns, that is for sure. You are going to see a smaller score line in this game because the New Zealanders will be harder to beat. Uh, harder to score against, that is for sure. Uh, they are just that little bit more class above the PNG Orchids. Um, so we won't see 84 nil. that is for sure. But I am obviously going to go for Australia in this one. I just think that those uh, combinations obviously worked well last week. Uh, they've got a lot of strike power especially in that centre combination, Isabel Kelly and Tiana Panatani. The, Ali Brigginshaw, she's a champion of the game. She comes back into the side as well. Um, up front, you've got Millie Elliott and Shannon Mato. Millie Elliott, you know what you're going to get from her as well. Um, so, look, I'm going to tip Australia, obviously, um, but this is going to be a cracking game. That is for sure. Uh, the next game, this sees the return bout, I guess you could say, of the Kiwis up against the Kangaroos in the men's game. Sunday, 4.05pm, Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time from Apollo Project Stadium, a sold-out venue in Christchurch. Um, again, great to see. And why not? These guys are the defending champions of the pacific championships we all saw what happened last year in the final 30 nil against australia their biggest win over australia ever um so look why not uh sell it out and the nation is getting behind them as i said before they sold out every new zealand warriors game so this is no different any game in new zealand at the moment rugby league is flying over there so uh another sold out crowd so look a few new faces james fisher harris returns as captain uh five test debutants so uh, I think last week for Australia there were six debutants. Uh, for New Zealand this week there's five. Keanu Kinney from the Gold Coast, Will Warbrick, Phoenix Crossland, uh, Nathaniel White, and Jordan Rickey. Um, Jerome Hughes is injured. Um, he was named initially in the New Zealand squad, but look, this is going to be this. Well, this is well, it was massive news then. But um, it's going to be great to see this player play at halfback for New Zealand. And, of course, I'm talking about Sean Johnson. He comes out of retirement um, and plays for New Zealand once again. Now, I do believe on a podcast he did say that, look, if New Zealand called me, I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to let my country down. Um, if the country needs me, I'm going to be there. So he is there. Uh, number seven for New Zealand. And it's great to see him back uh, for a couple more games anyway in his rugby league career. Uh, his NRL career is now finished, uh, but his international career is still going for a couple of games anyway. Um, and look, an unusual 5'8 partner, Dylan Brown, is obviously out with that knee injury that he suffered in Spoon Bowl uh, against the Tigers for Parramatta. Chan's nickel clockstar uh, starts in the number six position. So I haven't seen him play a lot of number six. Uh, most people know him as a fullback. Um, we have seen in the past fullbacks can play 5 8 uh, but I don't know about that one in the test arena. So that one will be quite interesting. Interesting, I should say, that is for sure. Peter Hiku, he's a, there's a name that you probably haven't heard for a while. Um, he plays his first test since the 2022 World Cup semi final. Um, and Cody Nikarima makes his first appearance since 2019. So, um, look, last season we saw in the Pacific Championships, Leo Thompson from the Newcastle Knights play really well and make a name for himself in that international arena. He is unfortunately serving a one-match ban for a careless high tackle in week one of the finals. So, 
he'll be available for selection next week. But look, that is a pretty strong looking side. Uh, Keanu Kinney, Jermaine Asako, point scoring machine, uh, goal kicking and tries for New Zealand. Uh, Matt Timoko, uh, Peter Heku, Will Warbrick, Charles Nickel Cockstar, Sean Johnson, James Fisher Harris, Phoenix Crossland, Griffin Neem, Isaiah Papali'i, Scott Sorensen, Joseph Tarpany, Cody Nicarima, Nathaniel White, Murata Neokore, and Jordan Ricky is the team. So. Uh, pretty strong looking side there. Uh, if I run through the Australian side, Dylan Edwards, Xavier Coates, Hamaso Tabio Fado, Tom Travoyevich, Zach Lomax, Tom Deeder, Mitchell Moses, Pat Carrigan, Harry Grant, Lindsay Collins, Angus Crichton, Cameron Murray, Isaiah Yo, the captain on the interchange bench, Matt Burton, Mitch Barnett. Uh, Ruben Cotter and Hudson Young. Now, if that sounds like the same side from last week, you would be correct. It is the same 17. Mal Meninga has stuck with that side. They got the job done against Tonga. Um, but they will be looking, hopefully a couple of those players will be looking for some more minutes um, than what they played in that game. Matt Burton, he's the number 14. He only got nine minutes. And also Hudson Young, he got 12 minutes in that game. So they'll be looking for a bit more of a go uh, against New Zealand. Uh, and I think potentially, well, obviously the way that the game goes, um, they may get more time on the field. But look, it... it One player, I think, who will find it very interesting in this game. He made his debut for Australia last week, and that is the number 15 for Australia, Mitch Barnett. Now, for those who don't know, uh, he plays for the New Zealand Warriors. Uh, He was their best player for this season. Uh, It's going to be interesting for him playing for Australia in New Zealand at a sold-out stadium, I think. Um, But he will love that atmosphere and he will love that challenge as well. But, uh, yeah, it must be a bit daunting, I guess, to come up against a full house of New Zealanders uh, from the opposition. Usually he's playing on the side that are cheering him on. But this time, this weekend, they'll be playing against somebody against them so they'll be cheering against him um this weekend isaiah yo he got the win in his first weekend as captain last week for australia so uh look this game for i'm not a hundred percent sure how many players played last year in this uh side for Australia, let just give me one sec and I'll have a look at up um, about it. Um, so it is actually eight players from Australia who are playing in this game played in that 30 nil drubbing by the um, New Zealand team. Uh, apologies, it is uh, seven players from last year's 30 nil loss to New Zealand that are playing in this week's game. Uh, Dylan Edwards, the Hammer, uh, Liam, uh, sorry, Ruben Cotter, Isaiah Yo, Harry Grant, Lindsay Collins, Pat Carrigan. Um, so for New Zealand who played on that day, Charles Nickel Clockstar, he was the fullback on that day. Uh, Matt Timoko, uh, Jermaine Asako. Obviously, James Fisher Harris, the captain, Isaiah Papali'i, Joe Tarpany, as well, Griffin Neem, as well. So, a little bit even, Stevens there. So, a handful of players played in that game last year. But getting back to the current day, this one, I think it's pretty crucial that Mal Meninga has stuck with the same side, to be honest. Um, you want to get those combinations right. It was a bit of a scratchy win, as I said in the review last week, um, and potentially that could have been because of the lack of time that these players have had together and the lack of time that they have played games as well because not all the players' teams made finals. So they will be better off for the run against uh, Tonga last week for this game here. Um, 
But, yeah, it's going to be a, a great game. I cannot wait for Sunday afternoon. Um, I just don't know who I'm really excited to look for uh, playing. I guess, as I mentioned before, it's going to be good to see Sean Johnson back in the Kiwi jersey. Um, obviously, I'm tipping Australia to win. Um because you know I am Australian, so I'm going for I'm going for Australia to win. But this is you know, I just I've got my question marks about Nickel Clockster at uh, five eight. I, as I said before, I haven't seen much of him play five eight, um, so I don't know if that's going to be a, a major factor or a big factor. Uh, it just may be. But Keanu Kinney at fullback, he's a bit of an excitement machine, a lot of pace. Um, so he'll be one to watch at the back there. A smaller fullback uh, than Dylan Edwards. So potentially you will see some high balls his way. Um, we all know Will Warbrick is great in the air, along with Zach Lomax for Australia as well. Um, so that will be uh, something to watch out for. Mitchell Moses up against Sean Johnson, the old master up against the young Bull, I guess you could say. Well, Mitchell's not that young these days, but uh, you all know what I mean there. Mitchell made his debut last week against Tonga, so uh, Sean Johnson has been there before for New Zealand in big games. So this will probably be Mitchell's biggest test, obviously in the Australian jersey, but probably well, his biggest test was in State of Origin game number three. And he came through with flying colours in that one. Unfortunately, he injured his biceps, so that ended his season for Parramatta, but uh, won the game for New South Wales. So uh, this will be a big test for him as well. Um, so, look, the back row battle is going to be an interesting one. Isaiah Papali, Scott Sorensen and Joe Tarpany up against Angus Crichton, and Cameron Murray and Isaiah Yo. So um, probably the back row of Australia could probably play for 80 minutes, I reckon, if they, if they need be. Um, Scott Sorensen, we know he's a Panthers premiership winner. Isaiah Papali'i, we all see what he can do. Um, hasn't had the best of seasons at the West Tigers, um, but we all know what he can do on this big stage. And Joe Tarpany, we know what he can do. Usually plays in the prop position for the Canberra Raiders, but um, is a lock in this game. So it's, uh, that will be a good battle there, I think, the back rows of each side there. I think probably the bench of Australia is probably a little bit better than the Kiwi side. We all know Cody Nikaruma, the 14 there. He can play a few positions just like Matt Burton as well. Um, Ruben Cotter, Hudson Young, Mitch Barnett, um, Jordan Ricky for New Zealand, Murata Niakore, Nathaniel White, um, Look, I think the Australian bench is a little bit better, and it'll be interesting to see if Matt Burton and Hudson Young do get a little bit more game time as well. Uh, this game being refereed by Ashley Klein, the grand final referee. Um, so I don't know how those two go against each other. If we look at... Obviously, they played twice last year in the Pacific Championships, uh, but the Kiwis getting the big win, 30 points to nil in the final. The Australians did beat them 36-18 uh, a week before that final. Uh, potentially, it could have been uh, a bit of a sort of, I guess, well, I guess New Zealand wanted to win that game before the final, but it could have been a bit of, you know, like Parramatta in the 2009 season when they played St George um, last week of the competition and then lost that game, got smashed, and then came out and beat them in the next game. So um, maybe that was the same then, but um, no, nah, I shouldn't say that because you always want to win a game for your nation, that is for sure. Look, uh, obviously I'm going to tip Australia in this one. I, I can't go past them, that is for sure. But I will say this. It will be a... I'm going to predict a 
th- uh, no, I was going to say 30. I'll, I'll say a 24-16 win to Australia. Uh, and I am going to say Zach Lomax first try score. Try, try scorer, there you go. Uh, Zach Lomax first try scorer. Off a Mitchell Moses bomb. There you go. Cross field. And 24-16. So a shout out to my fellow Kiwi uh, content creators. The Warrior Holic. And also Dave Carter from the Point of Difference podcast. It's myself up against you two guys. Um, I guess you could say in the content world. But um, look... May the best team win, um, and may that be Australia. So, look, thank you very much for listening to these podcasts about the Pacific Championships week number two preview. I hope you really have enjoyed that one. If you do, please give the podcast a follow on Instagram, Facebook, uh, also Apple, Spotify, whichever podcast platform you are listening to. Share it with your family and friends as well. That would be most appreciated. And the Paracave podcast by the fan for the fans. Go Australia! Hello Paracave podcast listeners. My name is Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty and long-term sponsor of the Paracave podcast. If you're looking to sell your property or buy or just curious to know what your property is worth in today's market, give me a call today on 0421 588 445. For listening to another episode of the Paracade Podcast. See you next time.